but I fell down the back, ended up in an, a car park from behind a factory. I was like, I'm going to get arrested in a different country. I was so scared. Um, but I just kept laughing. I was like, I'm on day two, and I can't believe this is happening to me when I'm on my own. It was, I found it hilarious, but some people would find this really scary. Welcome to Mamwa. I am Gordy Camp, your host, and this is the podcast that includes you into my most famous song lyrics. He's a middle-aged man with an attitude, and he didn't even have one till he met you. That's right, I'm the middle-aged man, and my attitude will chatter us through all things that I'm passionate about, from spirituality, the gym and fitness, food, traveling, and music or movies. Quick disclaimer, this list is not exhaustive. So you can get on or you can get off and join us for the episodes that you like the sounds of. Dip in or dip out, as long as you keep dipping. Either way, we've got something to say and we're going in three, two, one trip, seven countries. (laughs) I'll try that again. One trip, seven countries and less than a thousand pound. I had a two week holiday and I wanted to go traveling. There we go. Welcome to Mamwa. I am Gordy Camp. And today in this episode, this is a celebration of the podcast. We have made it to episode 11. I can't believe it. It took a while, but we got here. And you know what? We've so far, we have had so many amazing guests, some great subjects, a couple of ad hoc episodes. But they've all been really meaningful. They've all been very in-depth. And I think, because it's my podcast, they've all been very informational and beneficial for all you guys listening or watching if you're on the YouTube um, channel, if you're on the YouTube channel. So today, as a celebration, I'm going to take it back a year. Um, On my blog, there was a couple of um, times over the years that I've been asked about my trip. And I had a two-week period uh, a year ago, February, in 2023. And I decided that I had two weeks and I wanted to go travelling. I'd never been backpacking. I, As a student, I wanted to go travelling. I know people had taken a year out and I decided to work, make some money um, um, and be a bit of an adult. And I just never went travelling. So at the age of 40... Two, I decided now is the time it's never too late this is what we're doing today so firstly I decided and I just thought it would be really simple to talk through the process I knew I didn't want to spend extortionate amounts of money as I was looking online at different backpacking companies that I could book with you're looking at two and a half, three thousand pound. It wasn't even done solo. It was done as a, a group of like five people, ten people, in some cases fifteen people. And I'm like, hold on a minute, three thousand pounds. I'm good at planning. I'm good at organising. And that's exactly what I did. I got my head down. I put a plan together, and I got everything booked. So overall, just to give you a, an inkling as to what I'm going to talk about today, we. I say we, I went solo. I wanted to experience everything on my own without any inhibitions of somebody else wanting to do stuff or go in a group of people. I was like, I want to go traveling. I want to see what I want to see and spend the time I want to spend doing my things. So that's exactly what I did. The first thing I did was I decided, I didn't decide on how much I was going to spend. I just knew I'm not spending £3,000. Thank you very much. So I made a list of, there was about 10 to 15 places on my list of places I wanted to see that maybe I'd never been or countries I'd never been to, countries I had been to, but cities that I'd never managed to go and visit previously. And that's what my list was. Places that were relevant to me. And... I put that list together and then I decided, secondly, that I've got two weeks. So in that 14 day period, from the day I leave to the day I return, I want at least one day in each place. And I want to get as many places as possible. Then, as I was planning that, I thought, do you know what, I need some travel time from airports to hotels or hostels, depending on what I decide to do accommodation wise. But the first thing that I want to do for the simple reason is 
you can get cheap flights and I, I wasn't going to book a package because I knew I could get it cheaper if I booked the flights separately then went to accommodation and then decided on spending money based on how much it had already come to um, and luckily enough I decided on two weeks of dates and I had I'm just looking so from the day I left was the 5th of February and the day I returned was the 17th so you look at 12 days it turned out to be not 14. Uh, now it's really exciting because I also had to pay for my poor dog to go in the kennel so that was an added cost that I had to take into account um, but like I, like I said I didn't decide on a budget at that time I was like I, I didn't want to go too close to 1500 like I thought around about 1500 I can be happy with but if I get all the flights booked I'm forced to finish the bookings so basically that's that's why I started there um, and on the spreadsheet I put the dates together and then through that list of 15 places and flights and airports I just went with those key dates and I decided the first date, 6th, 5th of February, I leave the city in the UK and I go to the first place. But I didn't care where the first place was. I just decided that I'm going to go through all 15 of these places and the cheapest one gets booked. That was my first. I didn't care where it was. I just was like, let's just get the first one booked and then I'm started. And the first one was booked was Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, and the website uh, i use a few different websites here i used skyscanner i used um cheapflights.com i was using basically i just scoured some cheap flight websites um and i just went through them all so my one way all the flights were one way obviously because i was didn't know where i was going next and this flight to denmark from birmingham no, it wasn't from Birmingham, it was from Manchester, sorry, was £16. Now, the beauty of keeping the prices low was I wasn't taking a suitcase. I had a cabin bag, so it's a slightly smaller than a, sorry, slightly bigger than a backpack, but smaller than those little suitcases. And you can pop it over your back, just fasten it at the front, you can fit um, plenty of clothes in it, you can get enough toiletries for two weeks. I could have taken a laptop because it's got an area for a laptop bag, um, but I didn't. I was like, I'm going to be too busy. I'll just make sure I've got a, I've got a block charger with like four USB ports in it. So I'll just make sure that I bring that, keep everything charged and charge it overnight whilst I'm sleeping, wherever I end up. Uh, and that's what I did. Now, something you, you might not know about me is I love organizing stuff. So, before I go any further into this, this schedule, I actually took about six or seven weeks, not, per not permanently full-time, but six or seven weeks, and I would do maybe two and a half to three hours a night, just scouring for cheapest prices, checking different websites, ticking off a couple of flights a day, and then in the latter part, in the last three or four weeks, I was looking at accommodation instead of flights. Um, so I didn't rush it. And I, I think that's one tip that I would give to anyone who wanted to do something on the cheap. Um, and please don't get confused that, or please don't misunderstand that doing it cheap doesn't mean you get a bad trip. Because I'll, just as a disclaimer, I did not have one issue at all on the whole two week trip not one no flights got cancelled no hotels lost my booking there was no double bookings um i didn't lose travel money everything was perfect so just because you're going cheaper doesn't mean you get less an experience less of an experience because you don't like as long as you're confident in the process that you're doing which is why we're doing this today i want to help you so i um, got to copenhagen and like I said, a day and a half. So I, before I got on the plane, I did my search on Google for how to get from the next airport to my accommodation. So I did that for all seven countries and um, that's how I just made sure that I was always on top of my next step. I never left anything to chance in my head. So I don't like stress. So um, <laughs> I did that at Copenhagen and then on that trip, there is a, 
an app that I used whilst I was traveling called My City GPS, I think it is. And there's walking tours that you can just download for free. It's a free app and you choose the city you want. It gives you like four or five options of different walks based on how long the walk is, uh, how far you want to walk, the different sites that are on those walks. And then it gave me something to look for on the flight. So I was like, well, once I get there, I will, I'll choose this walk. It only takes four hours or it only takes two hours. And then depending on how tired I was at the time, I could decide, right, I think two hours is enough, a long enough walk and I can spend a couple of hours in a cafe. Then I can go out for dinner. I can get to the accommodation and just play it by ear. Like, don't have too much of a plan. Once you've got your flights, once you've got your accommodation, the plan can be done whilst you're out, there, whilst you're on the road, like whilst you're on the plane, whilst you're in the airport. Just take your time. As long as the flight's in the accommodation and you've got um, your money it's somewhere safe with your passport, nothing else can go wrong really, can it? And I'd, like, I'd say that as an open question. It's not an open question because for me, nothing went wrong. It's all in the confidence that you're happy with what you've done, you're happy with what you're doing, and then there you go. You can enjoy your backpacking trip or your, just, your trip because I didn't bring a massive backpack. It was just a small um, cabin bag, like I said, and I'll go into the details of the cabin bag contents later on in the episode. So sorry, distracted. Copenhagen. Um, I left Copenhagen. Uh, sorry, I arrived at Copenhagen at 7 a.m. It was a great flight, Ryanair, on, off, didn't have to wait for luggage, went straight to find a bus or a train, um, and that was £16 to get to Copenhagen. Amazing. No extra taxes, no extra luggage fees, don't care where I sit because I'm on my own, put me where you like. Okay, time in Copenhagen is one and a half days. That was the minimum I wanted to be in any one place. Um, and I checked in online. And there was no visa requirements. That was something else that I had to check before booking um, or making sure everything was booked properly. Is there a visa requirement to get to that country? And that was a decider. Like, that's an extra thing for me to think about. So let's just think about the places in Europe that don't need a, an extra visa. Um, if it's a, a city tax, you can pay when you get there. So that's not an issue. Um, however... I was also very much aware of the EU requirements now that Brexit has happened and all that kind of stuff. And I also checked, there's a part on the spreadsheet here where I also checked the size of the cabin bag that's allowed based on the airline. Because what I noticed accidentally in the first flight was different airlines allow different sized cabin bags. So although they're very similar, there may be like 10 centimeters in it. And that might be how some airlines get you to pay at the airport. So I was very much aware of that before I bought my cabin back, but that happened after I'd done my itinerary. So the free luggage capacity is, for example, 40 by 20 by 25 centimeters and 10 kilograms. And then just a random one, the ne a couple of lines down on my spreadsheet, I've got 30 by 20 by 38 so the dimensions are completely different but the bag may be like five ten centimeters in a different i don't know angle or whatever all the weights are 10 kilograms except one which was for scandinavian airlines they went to eight kilogram cabin bag so had that not been at the end of my trip they may have caught me out at the airport if they'd asked Something to be aware of if you decide to do this. Um, okay, so once I've been to Copenhagen, I used um, my city GPS, did a walk. It was amazing. Love Copenhagen. So much to see. Canals were amazing. Um, and then I got myself back to the airport. Um, so from Copenhagen, I decided to go through that list again. Ticked off Copenhagen, scored off the one that was cheapest for the next date, which was the next day, 6th of February was Berlin. Now I say next day because I had a day and a half. I arrived at 7am roughly and I didn't get on my next flight until 5pm the next day. So I'd already slept, it was early in the morning when I left here. I had, what's that, 18 hours 
in that city. That's all I need to do a walk, stop for a coffee, have a meal and move on to the next. If that's the kind of trip you want, then this is going to be the perfect way to plan it. And again, I didn't have to worry about anyone else's needs or wants or I could just take my time. If I run out of time, I'd get myself back to the airport and at least I had a nice coffee in Copenhagen. What, what could go wrong? So, um, Berlin. I arrived about 6 or 7 p.m. at night and that was only one hour on the plane. This one was with Norwegian Air. Um, and this flight was 24, sorry, 22 pounds, 40 pence. No extra fees, no taxes, no extra luggage. Same as always, let's just get the ticket, don't care where you sit me, off I go. Um, and I got two whole days in Berlin because of the way the flight, the next flight had landed. So, I say landed, dates that they ended up on. Yeah, Norwegian Airlines had a different sized luggage bag so that was what luckily enough it was the second one so i'm trying to give you all this key bits of information things to be aware of so i hope you're making notes make some notes so that was norwegian airlines now in berlin funny story but i landed about 6 7 p.m at night and i didn't want to waste the night so by the time i got um on the train the metro got into berlin city found my accommodation on Google Maps, took myself on a little walk, and I got, put my bag into the accommodation, and I thought, right, I went to drama school, I know a few practitioners that, that were from Berlin, and I just thought, I'll do a quick search and see where they're buried from back in the day. And it was only an eight minute walk, this was amazing. Um, so I went to, it was in February, there was snow and ice everywhere, so it was really cold. So I was all wrapped up. It was so so amazing. And I thought, I'll take a walk and I'll go and see the grave of Berthold Brecht, the theatre practitioner. And it was a bit dark and I was like, I'll use the torch on my phone. It's fine. I'm sure everything will be all right. So <laughs> I got to the, uh, the graveyard and the gates were open. Bonus. So in I went. I was using my torch trying to find this gravestone. And I was in there for a couple of minutes and I just heard this clunk, click, massive iron gate noise. And I was like, oh my God, somebody's closing the gates. I turned around and the, the I'm going to say the gatekeeper, I don't know what they're called. Um, the gatekeeper of the cemetery had locked the gates, got in his car and drove off. But the walls were like nine to ten feet high with like massive bars, spiky bars on top. So I was just like... I slid all the way to the gate and I started to shout. Nobody heard me. Didn't know what to do. So I decided to go and find the grave before I did anything else. Found the gravestone, took a couple of pictures. Then I tried to find my way out. There was no other gates. All the walls were too high. And then I found one part of a wall that didn't have any spikes on it. Um, so I gambled over it, ended up in the back. Like There was a deeper fall at the back, so I'm surprised I didn't break a leg. But... I fell down the back, ended up in a car park from behind a factory. I was like, I'm going to get arrested in a different country. I was so scared. Um, but I just kept laughing. I was like, I'm on day two and I can't believe this is happening to me when I'm on my own. It was, I found it hilarious, but some people would find this really scary. Note, be careful when you make stupid decisions in countries on your own. Uh, so, um, I managed to end up in this car park behind a factory and I ran to the gates of this factory ready to l jump over those gates which were about seven feet high luckily enough the gate opened and I was just oh my god so happy I got out of there and I just ran I was like if there's any cameras anywhere or somebody saw me climbing walls the police are looking for me and I was just like I need to get out of this city uh, but anyway the next day I didn't get arrested, so everything was fine. Um, but I made the most of it, and I think that's the point I'm making here, is when you get to your cities, even if you've got a couple of hours, don't try not to lock yourself away in your accommodation. If you've got an hour, if you've got two hours, just take a walk around the city. Like, it's because it's beautiful. If you're not getting locked in cemeteries, it's absolutely beautiful to see these cities in the night and the day, if you can help it. So yeah, that's just 
a little story from my trip to Berlin. Um, so that was Berlin, and then from there I went on a walk the next day. I think I took a longer walk in Berlin um, because I've never been to Germany. Well, I've never been to any, any of them except Spain. And then I went from Berlin to Brussels, and that flight was then at 6 p.m. the next night. Or half past five, sorry, I'm exaggerating. And that was a two-hour flight. So again, I didn't get to Brussels till 8 p.m., and I took a bit of a walk because I, when I checked the accommodation distance, it was actually about a 40-minute walk to my accommodation. And I thought, Do you know what? I feel okay. I'm going to walk instead of getting a, a metro to my accommodation. So I walked through Brussels in the evening, taking in all the uh, buildings, taking in the architecture, the the city itself, the street lighting, the people, and it was just stunning. And I don't exaggerate there, but when you've never been somewhere and you're on your own, you can just enjoy the atmosphere. I, I, I actually, doing an, an episode on solo travel um, at the start of our podcast, um, we did discuss how that might not be the case if you're uh, a single female traveling alone, or a solo female traveling alone, sorry. Find something you can do to not waste any time when you arrive for these short periods is essentially the points that I'm making. So Brussels um, went for, it. there wasn't much I thought to see the next day in Brussels using this app. Um, and I managed to do it in only a couple of hours and then I had quite a few hours to just look at the chocolate shops and the palace and just spend more time taking in the the city square and all that kind of stuff so it was really nice um, I left Brussels at half past five and then I went to Barcelona now this is the only city on my trip in a country that I'd been to before so I'd been to Spain I've loved the idea of going to Barcelona for years uh, so I want to make sure that I put that halfway through if I could help it and this flight was 30 pounds sorry I forgot to say the flight for Brussels was only 19 pounds um, and again just to reiterate go through the list checking off the cheapest ones as you book them because if you've got 15 and you only need seven you're definitely or more than likely going to get a really cheap flight for the cities you want to go to Barcelona 30 pound flight um, I think Barcelona is quite a highly sought after city um, but again this was probably the cheapest at that time because it's halfway through the journey almost so I was quite happy that I could I could get there for that price one way uh, Barcelona was amazing in February there was loads of roadworks there was loads of nonsense happening in the city and obviously it's out of season so I don't know if it's just because most cities are like that, but I've never been to Barcelona, so I wouldn't know. Uh, but it was amazing. I went to some galleries. I did like the tour from the app. Spent four hours stopping for a coffee, cafe con leche every now and again. It was it was very nice. I did I did enjoy it. Um, so I left there at seven p.m. that night, and I had one and a half days there. Then I went to Amsterdam, and this one was with. Scandinavian Airlines, Barcelona was with Vueling Airlines. So what you'll notice is there's so many different airlines being used because I'm going with the cheapest price. Okay, as long as you're basing your decision on price for the sake of an hour on hour, an hour and a half on a plane, Europe to Europe, Europe to Europe, and you only wait about an hour on the flight by the time you get to the airport anyway, and it's a good downtime to put your stuff on social media. Write a little review on the things you've done. Edit your pictures, your Insta life, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, yeah, just take that time. It's it's good downtime for yourself as well to process your trip, so that it's not just done, 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 done. Like you're actually getting time to reminisce on all the stuff that you've seen. I loved it. Amsterdam. The flight was two hours. And that was £68. So this was the most expensive one the whole trip. And then we went from there to Stockholm. 
uh, in Scandinavian Airlines again. And then finally, we went from, I say we, me and myself and I in my head, <laughs> Stockholm to Budapest. And that was the last one, £18. Now, for, let me just tally this up. And then the last one was my flight home to Birmingham. £136 for my flight home because I had no other choice. I had to get home. From Birmingham, sorry, Manchester, back to Birmingham within that two week period, the total cost for all the flights £330.10. For seven countries, get me into Europe and get me back. £330. Now, if you think £136 just to get home, but the total cost, 330 every flight was a steal on average. Then, once that was done, I thought, right, do you know what? That's an amazing price, £330. Let's see how, how, how good I can get the accommodation. I did exactly the same thing. I put a couple of hours aside every night. And I decided to book two or three accommodations every night. I looked at hotels, hostels. Um, I'd never stayed in a hostel before, so that was a concern for me. I was like, I'm so scared. I don't want to share a room with like loads of different people. And there's like 10 beds in some of them. Is my stuff protected? Is there lockers? Like, what? Look, like, I'll be scared sleeping at night. I'll be scared in case things get stolen. But then I realized if I'm doing all of that, and I'm spending four or five hours every day walking anyway, and then I have to get my dinner or my lunch or whatever, all I'm going to be doing is sleeping there. I'll take my bag, I'll sleep, and I'll leave. So, overall, I was like, I'll just book something nice but cheap. As long as it's nice, I'm fine. As long as it's not something that looks horrid, I'm not too fussed by it. Um... So that was my mentality going into the accommodation. I thought about that before I decided what I was booking. I used websites like booking.com, lastminute.com. I also looked at Airbnb. Um, so I just I just did a bit of scouring every night um, to find the right thing for each place. And I did it in order so that I was never getting confused. I checked what distance is it from the airport? How close is it to the actual city? Um, and if I could help it, I booked it in the actual city and I did a bit of a search on what the transport is from the airport to the hostel before I decided whether that was right for me or not. So yes, again, it takes a, couple, a, a bit of time to make sure you've got the right decisions. But once you've decided on it, just go. Boom. I'll book it. Move on. Try not to overthink it. Just make sure that simple to get to cheap enough and check all the pictures of the rooms to make sure it's up to your standard. If you're looking at five star hotels for every single place for two weeks then it's never going to be cheap and cheerful and you you may waste your money and spend most of your trip staying in a room which isn't the point of backpacking or <laughs> traveling. There you go that's that was my take on it that was my mentality going into the accommodation. So I made sure it was all local, helpful, Handy, cheap, and safe. Will all my stuff be safe? Will I be safe during the night? What I noticed is a lot of the beds have got curtains across them and underneath the beds or next to the beds, they have lockers for your stuff. It's only a cabin bag. I didn't have a massive backpack with a sleeping bag and all that nonsense that you see. Um, so I didn't have to worry about stuff like that. And in most of them like are beds, but with I'm going to say pods, so they've got USB ports and sockets right next to the bed. So if you weren't tired and you were still had loads of energy after all that walking and you just wanted to watch a movie on your phone, then you can plug your phone USB in, watch a film on your phone, and yeah, Bob's your uncle. Eat your snacks. I was eating crisps watching a film with my curtain drawn. It was great. I could hear people now and again coming in the door and leaving. I didn't really talk to anyone. If you're sociable, amazing. Go and talk to everyone. But I just wanted some doubt. I'm, I don't force small talk. I don't like it. That's fine for me. But there's so many communal areas. You can go to the bar, play games with complete strangers. Um, now and again, I just went to the shop. I bought a few snacks. 
I went and sat in the bar and I just minded my business and people watched. Nobody spoke to me. I must have looked so unapproachable, it was brilliant. Um, but anyway, that's that was my take on it and that's how I went around in, in these hostels. But that was what made my decision. I'm not going to be there for long. I'm happy enough, to, as long as I make sure it's safe, it's got showers and I, I, I can keep everything locked up. I'm okay. Copenhagen, one night, £15. Berlin, two nights, £31. So only £15 each a night. Brussels, one night, £19. Barcelona, two nights, £33. Amsterdam, two nights, £35. So still only less than £20 a night. Stockholm, Sweden, two nights, £38. So still less than £20. We're doing well. Budapest, two nights and £27. That's just under £15 a night. So the accommodation was relatively cheap. Seven countries, two weeks, £200 for accommodation. That's great. That's absolutely amazing. So overall, Five hundred and thirty pounds and nineteen pence. Trip booked. How amazing is that? And all I had to do is put in a little bit of time and a little bit of thought. Take your time, there's no rush. Just make the decisions that you want to make to have the trip that you want to have. As a, as a trip booked, that was amazing. And I thought, do you know what? For 500 odd pounds, I would be happy to go up to a thousand pounds for this whole trip. So that was my aim. I was like, I'll go up to 500 pounds for this whole trip. A thousand pounds for this whole trip. Now, that meant that my spending could be 50 pounds a day on average. I knew I wouldn't spend 50 pounds a day. I'd get my breakfast, some breakfasts were included in that accommodation um, but the other ones I was like I'll find a bakery when I go out for my, my coffee I'll be doing that anyway so I'll have my breakfast with my coffee great it only adds a couple of pounds a day I'll be so busy walking that I'll probably just be stopping for a snack it might be a baguette from a shop it might be um, a quick bag of crisps or a chocolate bar to keep my energy up I'll see how I get on great that's maybe 20 quid a day and then an evening meal I was like, I'm not going to go out for fancy meals. I'll be too busy seeing the sights and just maybe go to a bar for a quick drink and grab a burrito on the way home or a bag of chips or something. Like I wasn't desperately in need to do this extravagant wine and dine. Like I was there to travel. Like I'll just eat whatever I need to eat to get through the day. But I knew my allowance. So I gave myself a £50 a day allowance, which was, I thought, perfect. That's all I need. Um, and that turned out to be about £600 for two weeks, roughly. Um, or I gave myself £600 for two weeks and that worked out to about, I don't know, I don't have the calculator, but that worked out to roughly around that area. And that's what I did. And I can tell you that I spent less than £50 a day. I got home and I'd only spent £970 all in, roughly. I can't remember the exact number in total now. Um, but yeah, less than £1,000 for two weeks, seven countries, because I planned it myself. And I really hope that hearing this, and if this has, has helped, it will really give you that confidence because nothing went wrong in that trip. The only thing that happened, didn't go wrong, but something that happened was two weeks before I was due to leave, one of the flights was delayed by one hour, which I knew two weeks ahead. So I was just like, oh yeah, that makes no difference to me getting to my accommodation. It makes no difference to, because I'm only going from one country to another. If anything, it gave me an extra hour in one of the countries. I think it was Berlin to Brussels, if I remember rightly. So that gave me an extra hour in Germany, which was amazing. Like I said, I'd never been to any of these countries before. Every single moment was a bonus. Um, and I'm not somebody who gets stressed at stuff. I'm not somebody who looks for anxiety. So I just made a point of taking everything as it comes. I can deal with it if it happens. 
So let's move forward then and think about how I packed and did my money. The money is the easiest bit because if you've ever used a Monzo, Monzo card is run by um, MasterCard partners. So they, it's a good job I had one because I was doing my research for what's the best conversion rates and MasterCard was always leading. Luckily enough, a Monzo card, which is an online account, you can pay everything contactless. You don't need to carry euros everywhere. I used cash once on that whole trip and it's because the card machine in Amsterdam didn't work. So the place I went for my dinner, my evening meal, the card machine didn't work and I said I don't have any cash. And the manager came out and said, oh, can you get to a bank? I said, where's your closest bank? Um, and I didn't have my card because I was using phone contactless, Google Pay. So I said, I don't have a card. Um, he said, can you come back tonight? And I'd done like a two hour walk. So it was like an hour and a half further away from the hotel by that point. Uh, I said, leave it with me. I need to, no, I'll come back and pay you later. I, I had to walk around anyway. I had to do a bit of sightseeing. So I'll just take a different route to get here later on tonight. Great, no problem. That was the only time I used cash. Um, and he gave me, it's really weird, should have just given me a dinner for free. Because I did that, that evening when I went back, it wasn't my evening meal, sorry, it was lunch. Um, that evening when I went back with the money, he gave me a free beer and a um, plate of chips. But chips to them is crisps, so a plate of chip, a plate of crisps. And I was like, oh, that's uh, <laughs> half my meal cost just for that beer and some crisps. So, win-win. Um, they were so nice, it was great. But that's the only time I had to use cash because I'd used the MasterCard on Monzo. So that was money, I didn't have to worry about euros, didn't have to go to banks. It was so simple. All the accommodation was paid by card or pre-booked. So simple. So I'd, I would 100% advise, and ever since I've done that trip, any other time I've been to Europe since then, I've never had cash. Done everything contactless. Amazing. Packing. Okay, so in this cabin bag, it's obviously small in a suitcase. So I had to be careful and really think about how I was going to take the right stuff. So for two weeks, I decided I wanted disposable clothes. Now, this is going to cause a bit of a ruckus for some people who hate waste. Um, but I decided that I don't want this bag to be heavy for the whole two weeks. So I'd like it to get lighter as I go through the process. Um, and that's, I'm not going to buy stuff to take home. I'm just going traveling. If anybody wants souvenirs, I can order something off eBay. <laughs> I don't care. I'm going traveling. So I bought disposable t-shirts. Now by disposable, I mean cheap enough to throw away once you've worn it. Disposable underwear, cheap enough to throw away once I was getting changed. I had 13 pairs of underwear, 13 pairs of socks, 13 plain white t-shirts. Nobody would see them. Other than that, all I had was my toiletries in my in my bag, just small travel size, and they lasted two weeks easy. Um, I didn't bring razors, obviously because of the airports problems, getting on planes and stuff. So be be very aware of things like that. Um, you may need to rough it for a couple of weeks. Again, it's all down to keeping costs, keeping costs down, keeping everything simple, concise. Get gone, get home, have a great time. And if I was ever taking pictures, I'd just make sure I looked at the right angle, where I didn't look unshaven, dirty. <laughs> so t-shirts, clean every day. Trousers, I wore the same pair of jeans for two weeks. And I wore a dark pair of jeans because if I spilt something, you wouldn't tell. That was the trick. I didn't want a pair of trousers that would show stains if I had any accidents. Um, I wasn't worried about being smelly because you can buy deodorant in cities. There was laundrettes if ever they did start to smell with all the traveling. And you know what, they never, 
they never smelt once. And I used to do regular smell checks um, every few days. No, they were fine. You have to let go of some of these nonsense thoughts or worries because it's the experience that I was going for. I didn't care what people thought. Um, and I did tell myself, if anything smells, I'll wash it in the shower and let it dry overnight. Um, or I'll put on a wet pair of jeans the next day if I need to. And the second thing was the hoodie. Um, I had a jacket and a hoodie. And I decided I'll wear this hoodie for one week. And wherever I end up halfway, I'll see how it smells. If it smells, I'll buy, I'll throw it and I'll buy a new one. So I just wore an old hoodie. Um, footwear, I wore my walking boots because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of walking before I got there. The only thing with walking boots is they're really comfortable. They don't hurt your feet when you're walking every single day. But at the airports, because the metal on the shoes and the boots, you have to take them off every single time you go to the airport. Which was a bit frustrating. First two or three airports, then didn't matter. I just tucked the laces in before I went through security. No issues. You get used to it. Um, and that was that was my luggage. My battery pack, like I said, it's a, quite heavy, but they don't weigh cabin bags. They just go by size. And if they think it's too over overpacked, they might weigh it then. Um, that's it. I genuinely do not think there was anything else to cover about this trip other than what I did in every single place. But today, I really just wanted to help anyone who's listening to plan and organize a nice trip around Europe that's not expensive. Because it doesn't have to be expensive. I know that is expensive um, if you're on a tight, tight budget. But if you want to half that cost, half that cost, do a week. Choose different countries. Go less countries. Do two countries in a week. Every year. It doesn't have to be extortionate. You don't have to pay other companies. In my opinion. And that, folks, is... That's today's episode. I didn't realise it would take that long, actually. I thought, oh, I'll just let's just go through this itinerary and see if I can help. But yeah, just overall, one and a half days, seven countries. I made a note of... Everything on one spreadsheet, what the hotel was, how much everything was, what airline it was, um, what time the flights leave, what time the flights land, size of the bags for each airline. There's a column here for did I check in online, yes or no, so that I didn't get confused when I got to the airport. I could just be like, do I need to check in or am I just jumping through because I don't need to put anything in? Have I got a boarding pass? Because once you've checked in, you get your boarding pass digitally. Visa requirements, every single one of them is no, because I double checked that. Um, and then I've got booking documents based on the website. So some are kiwi.com, was the website where I got some cheap flights. Trip.com, some of the flights were booked through there. Budgetair.co.uk is the final booking on some of them. Yeah, so most of them came from that. So the airlines are different than the actual websites. So I think when you go to cheapflights.co.uk or um, Skyscanner, the actual booking sites are not the same sites as the one you're, you're finding them on. Um, but as long as you're focused on the price and no, no extra costs, don't choose your seat, don't worry if you're on your own. Um, because it's when you start to go more than that, that's where all the costs come. Folks, I really hope that helped. I've really enjoyed telling you about my itinerary today. Um, I might actually do a bit more talking about how I live my life and get some of these fun little nuggets of information over to you. I will leave it there, but thank you so much for spending this episode with me. I've loved it. I love helping you guys. Um, and like I say, I've been asked about this trip a few times based on price. So, yeah, put some time in. Don't rush. Take your time. Just shop around. Get a plan together. Just book it. Once you've booked it, 
you can assess your costs as you go along. Um, but yeah, this one, just under £1,000, seven countries, two weeks. If you want to take the costs down on that, then less countries, maybe less countries, two weeks, but the accommodation costs might stay the same. So maybe do a week, three countries. Yeah, just have a think about your budgets. If you do have any further questions, you can connect on Facebook, Gordy Camp TV. You can contact me on Instagram and threads at Gordy Camp. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share this podcast. You may know somebody else that needs this. You may have been talking to a friend or somebody in your family about going traveling. Ask them for some money. <laughs> I really hope that has helped. Guys, please do keep the conversation going over on social media, especially here on YouTube if you're watching the video. I do this for free to help you guys and just connect. So I would love to get this conversation going on a much deeper level as well. So please do reach out. And we will see you next week. And can I just say again, thank you so much for helping me get to episode 11. Right, 10 episodes done. I feel like we're getting better and we're getting a bit of momentum on this show. If you know anybody you'd like to see on the show, if that you, you want to hear something specific, just let us know and we will get something together for you. Take care, guys, and lots of love. We will speak soon. Bye.